Greetings, fellow airsoft nerds. Tis I, James, or Kaber, as the cool Instagram kids like to call me. Your king! Your mighty king! Uh, today I'm going to be talking briefly about how to incorporate a more milsim style of whatever at your local field. The way I'm going to be doing that is by basically breaking down how I run my field's milsim day. Now, if you're not familiar with this, or if some random ass player just sent you this video, hi, how's it going? My name's James. I'm the chief executive officer as well as the operations manager for True Aim, which is an outdoor airsoft field based in Roseville, California, which is kind of in the Sacramento area. I'm gonna do this thing and go check the link in the description below because there should be, if I remember to do it after I upload this stupid video, there should be a link to a Google document that I have uploaded, which has my entire mill sim day brain plan thing. I'll do a quick breakdown of kind of like how I manage players and do the teams and you know marketing and stuff like that. I'll also do some business considerations as far as like how to use that specific day to sell additional or new products at your field. I'm going to do a quick overview so you kind of know everything that's in this document. This is also a living document so I might make changes from you know time to time or add stuff or add notes or something like that but this is the basic way I run my field's milsim days. I even have links on here. Let's talk about the team colors or the uniforms. Keep in mind, the main purpose behind my Milsim days are to prepare players for what they could experience at a larger scale event, like uh, you know Milsim West Overwatch Tactics, you know, American Milsim Third Coast, blah, blah, blah. There is usually a uniform requirement of some very, even if you look at like Desert Fox, there's a uniform requirement. So the way I have my rules and everything set up is if you do not comply with my rules for my event, I will deny players entry. I will not take a player's money if they don't conform to the rules. If you show up to some of these larger scale events and you don't have the stuff that they require you to have, you're out. I only had problems with this in about maybe the first or second event and this was with a significant amount of promotion, a lot of online chatter, a lot of posts about it, stuff like that. Now that I've been running them, I think I've done six or seven this year. There's a pretty good flow. Everyone knows the rules that's going on. So like your first two will probably kind of dodgy because uh, not everyone's going to know. This is something different. It, anytime you introduce something new to your customers, they're going to get confused. The teams I've set up are the Screaming Eagles and Sigma 6. The base colors for Screaming Eagles are green and brown or tan, which is most of the modern uh, camouflage patterns. Uh, and I will also allow solid colors as well. Some promotions, like some larger events, won't let you do solid colors. Some will. Some will say camo patterns only. For the sake of making it easier for my customers to participate in this or my players, I will allow solid colors. The Sigma 6 is black gray and blue and i even have picture examples so yeah you know like your solid blue stuff but really it's like the navy digi uh black multicam which is real popular any basic black combat shirt which a lot of players will have uh and what's usually called casual camo which is the old like gray stuff i don't think i've ever seen anyone wear gray or like the old acus at like um any like an ams event or any large event this is all of the rules i have basically my uniform regulations so really all you have to do is wear a top. That's your uniform jersey, basically. You just wear a top and you're good to go. It has to be some kind of military uniform top. So like a, a foot, a black t-shirt doesn't count or a black long sleeve shirt doesn't count or a black, or excuse me, like an M81 civilian hoodie you can buy at Walmart doesn't count. It basically either has to be a combat shirt or like a BDU blouse, like a uniform blouse. Equipment rules are kind of standard. I do not allow extended triggers. You have to have, uh, so all of this is Milsim day specific. On any Saturday, I don't care if you have a three foot long trigger and no trigger guard. I don't care, I don't care. On Milsim day, these are the equipment rules you will adhere to, or I will not let you in. I give players one warning for an event so let's say they show up and they had a uniform on but they had an hpa gun with a uh, primary arms adapter well if you show up next month i'm not taking your money since this is your first time here i'll let you play next month you show up like that i'm not going to take your money for games i usually run pretty advanced objective based games i will not run most of these games on a regular weekend with a regular public session one 
those players are not going to understand all the variations of rule. If you're a manager and you understand, or if you've even just played a regular weekend field, it's hard enough to get these idiots to remember where the damn spawn point is. You want to start throwing extra rules in there? No, that's not going to happen. If you want more advanced, objective-based games, you need to come to my Milsim day. I have separate content for this game I call Quest for Avalon. This is an hour long. Uh, it's, it's really advanced. It's basically domination with a medic rule and an in-game currency and some rolls and it's, it's pretty cool a lot of kids really love this uh but there's a lot of restrictions so you once the game starts players cannot leave the field so i have uh bb's provided in different loot boxes so if you run out of bb's you need to go to your commander your leadership and get you know, a refill basically because if any of my staff sees you go off the field during the game they don't let you back on so now it's it's a lot less spammy because of that, and everyone is thinking about ammo conservation. Within Quest for Avalon, I have different missions. I call them quests. So this was all based off of uh, Conquest of Avalon, which is the annual event that Overwatch Tactics does. That guy's a, one of my best friends. I love working with him. I do a lot of stuff with him, and I really fell in love with that event. So I try to bring that experience to my field, and I do it with this specific game. More importantly, let's talk about the business considerations. I have kind of some bullet points. I understand that because I am limiting the type of player that can come to this event, I could lose revenue. So in order to compensate for that, I have done additional uh, strategies, I guess, with products and services. I'll go over that shortly. I give free entry and free rentals to any first responder veteran. So anyone that was in the military, anyone that was a police officer, fire, EMS, they can get into my mail sim day for free and they can also rent a gun for free most of those folks at some point will play airsoft anyway or they probably have friends that play airsoft all they really need to do is bring a uniform top which most likely will match my uniform regulations anyway i give them a gun they have a great time maybe they maybe that is how i can get some new regular customers maybe maybe they'll be one and done cool i'm making money that day anyway i really don't care i've only gotten about Five, I'd say I in a single mail sim day, I have not had any more than 10 first responders. So it's not, you know, I'm not going out of business because I allow this. And I'll usually get about 30 to 50, depending on the weather. So my mail sim days are about, as far as regular attendance, about 20% less than a normal Saturday, which for a niche game with a lot of restrictions is pretty good. Another thing it allows me to do is create all kinds of new content and a lot of new social media stuff. So if you're tired of posting about, hey, who's ready for Saturday? Yeah, capture the flag. Cool, you can do some real cool engaging posts about like, show us your loadout for mail someday, tag us in the field. You can do more now with your social media and you can do more content styles. So if like, if you're at that point in your social media or in your marketing where you're starting to plateau with content and you just have no idea what, like I've been posting that we sell these guns for a month, blah, blah. Try a mail sim day and see if that doesn't give you some new ideas for some new marketing strategies or some new content. Remember how I was talking about some of the product strategies I have for this? Let's say you have a player does not know it is mail sim day, but they still want to play. They have their own gun. They just don't have a uniform. Cool. You have two options. You can either buy a faction shirt. So those two factions that I said I have, I sell shirts and patches for both of them. So you can either buy a Sigma 6 shirt and be on the Sigma 6 team or a Screaming Eagle shirt and be on the Screaming Eagles team. If you're kind of tight on cash or you don't want to buy the shirt for whatever reason, cool. For $5, you can rent a uniform top that we take home and wash every weekend. We only rent them out once. So let's, especially for, you know, doing business in a post-COVID world, let's say a kid shows up, he rents a Sigma 6 uniform top, which is just like an old ACU top. Rents it, plays with it, takes off. That goes back in the box. No one rents it out again for the rest of the day. I take it home and wash it. You're not going to see it again until next month anyway. Another thing that can really help you is the sale of bandages. So a lot of the games we'll play at mill someday have medic rule. So it's not the medic rule like with a two-hand touch, which you might see in like regular weekend games. You have to actually put on some kind of physical bandage or mock tourniquet. If you have an eVike account, just look for the Milsim West tourniquets. 
I don't remember how much they deal are for. We sell them for 15 bucks. I think we make like three dollars profit or four somewhere between like three to five dollars profit per tourniquet or whatever so let's say you know you only see 10 percent or 15 or 20 percent less attendance on a milsom day to the normal saturday well if you sell enough of those tourniquets that can kind of help recoup that cost if you have a player that isn't able to buy one of those that's fine because the way that i've designed all my games you don't need those items they're just super convenient because i do incorporate a bleed out rule I'm going to start this part of the video off by letting you know that I play Dungeons and Dragons. Right now my character is a level 3 Wood Elf Ranger. So I'm big into like lore and backstories. Again, if we go back to what we we're talking about for content and social media marketing, if you develop the backstory or the lore of your factions, or if you just want to use mine, that's fine. It allows you to create more content that's more, it's a lot different than who's ready for the weekend, guys. If you want to get super crazy, I have three different types of milsim days. Strap in, because this is where it gets nerdy. A normal milsim day could easily be described as just another Saturday with a dress code and those games that I have. But it's normal in the sense that, like, there's no quest there's no extra pizzazz to it one game doesn't really have anything to do with the other it's just it's kind of more like another saturday with a milsim dress code a campaign milsim day is what i'm going to be experimenting with on the 6th of november at my field so hopefully i'll do a follow-up video for that it's a little bit more larpy because i really love what soda with overwatch tactics is doing so i try to incorporate that but it's a lot more lore based uh, I try to go a little bit deeper and incorporate some of the backstories in some of the games. I come out and instead of like announcing, okay, the next game, I try to come out as like a herald and I start making like, rally the troops, rally the troops, two arms, two arms. And then from there, in that like me shouting, part of that is to describe like what, what the game is and where the teams are supposed to go. But the objective for my campaign Milsim Day is how a campaign would go in Dungeons and Dragons. It's a linear progression. So... Uh, depending on who wins or loses one game, maybe that does or does not impact the next one, maybe that does or does not impact the next one, but what it can impact is Quest for Avalon. Because Quest for Avalon itself is an hour-long game, I do about a 15-ish or so minute briefing for it, and then I give players kind of 10 minutes to sort of strategize, so you're really looking at about an hour and a half. My field's open for five hours, so we'll play about three games, to get everyone warmed up for Quest for Avalon, and then we jump into Quest for Avalon. Here's how you'd run a normal Millisim day, so here's the games lineup for that, and just sort of an explanation of everything. Here's how I'm going to run my campaign Millisim day, with the games list and all that. Uh, so I'm trying to experiment with magic items that would be a part of uh, the campaign day. I haven't really figured out how to incorporate that yet, uh, but I'm working on it. That's it as far as like how I run my Milsim days and like the strategies and the business considerations and stuff. Uh, if you want to plagiarize everything I do, take that template and just do everything the same way I do it at your field. That's fine. Or take concepts of it or change it. I don't care. If it helps to give fields a better experience to their players, take everything I've ever done. Steal everything from me. Never give me credit. I don't care. Try this at your field. Shoot me a DM, TA underscore Kaber, let me know if it worked, because then I want to see, like, is this just something I've figured out how to do, or can I create a day or some sort of event that I could give to Fields, and then Fields can do it. Let me know. Kaber, who the f*** are you, nerd?